Good news, parents. Are you currently homeschooling? Today's video meets Common Core standards for English language arts, speaking, and listening. Here's how to use today's story time as a part of your child's English lesson. Step one, watch today's story time video with your child. Step two, pause the video after each question that I ask at the end of the video and let your child answer one at a time to see how well they listened and understood the story. Step three, follow agreed upon rules of discussion. Listen to your child with care and then you can dialogue, speak one at a time about the topics and texts under discussion. And last, step four, ask any further questions to clear up any confusion about the topics and texts under discussion. And then check out this book at your local library and practice reading aloud at home. Enjoy today's video. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Authorized. I'm your hostess, Christina Smith, and today we have another African tale. All right, and it's from the country of Cameroon, which is on the continent of Africa. So if you look at the map behind me, you will see Cameroon, which is a small little country in central West Africa. So take a look right there. All right, now today's uh, story is called The Talking Skull, and it is another story from the book, A Pride of African Tales written by Donna L. Washington and illustrated by James Ransom. Once a man was walking down the road toward his village. He was not paying attention to anything around him. This man considered himself a scholar of life. He was always in deep thought. He liked to think about important things. He did not put his mind to ordinary problems. If it wasn't possible, or at, if it wasn't impossible, or at least very complicated, he didn't care about it at all. This man spent all day looking out over the ocean, and he only noticed things that he thought were useful. He didn't notice the beauty of the ocean. The only things he considered were sharks and shipwrecks. He didn't notice the clear blue sky. He was thinking about all the storms that must have been churning far away. He did not notice the wonderful songs of the birds. He only thought about how many of their nests had been robbed. He didn't notice the playful animals swinging through branches or rustling in the grass. He only wondered whether or not the great cats were on the prowl. That was the kind of man he was. As he walked back toward the village that day, he happened to pass a pile of bones. They were bleached white and they gleamed in the bright sun. He stopped and stared at them. He was the sort of man who would stop to stare down at a pile of bones. The skull on the pile was resting above all the other bones and it seemed to be watching the man just as intently as he was watching it. The man reached out and picked up the skull. He held it one way and then another. He looked gravely into the empty eye sockets and said, What brought you here, brother? Talking, the skull replied without much interest. The man was so shocked, he dropped the skull and jumped back. He watched the skull for a few minutes before he managed to stammer out, You can talk. Yes, said the skull, talking is very easy. All you have to do is open up your mouth and out it comes. Talking is easy. Finding something worthwhile to say is not. The man was amazed. He had never seen a talking skull before, let alone one that could spout such wisdom. I must take you to the village, the man exclaimed. He scooped up the skull and ran as fast as he could. The villagers saw him coming, and a great many of them ran for their homes. You see, he was the kind of man who was always getting busy people into useless conversations when there was work to be done. He never seemed to be quiet, and he never spoke about anything anyone ever, anything anyone ever wanted to hear. 
As he entered the village, he called out to his neighbors, Come quickly, I have something wonderful to show you. No one came. The man was so excited that he did not even realize that the few people in sight were moving away from him. Put down whatever you are doing, everyone. I have a marvelous story to show all of you, the likes of which you have never before seen. When the man said the word mystery, you can be sure he got the attention of some of the villagers. They started poking their heads out of their houses. Women left their yams cooking. Men put down their digging sticks and children stopped their playing. They all began to gather around the man. When he saw that he had everyone's attention, he drew out the skull. He could not have prepared himself for what happened next. Everyone stared at the skull for a moment. Then they all started yelling, Mama, what is he doing? cried a little boy. How dare you bring that thing here? His mother howled, waving a spoon. Somebody said another clutching her child send him away demanded a third mother the men who still had gardening tools in their hands started waving them move out of the way yelled a man with a digging stick somebody get the chief said an old man holding his grandson's hand there was so much commotion the chief came to see what was happening what is going on the chief roared. He was a very orderly chief, and he did not like all this yelling and brandishing of gardening tools in the middle of the village. All the people were silent except for one villager. He stood up and pointed to the man with the skull. This man told us he had something to show us. Then he pulled out that awful skull. We thought he was trying to call the dark spirits to the village, and we were trying to stop him. Oh, said the chief, eyeing the man with the skull. And were you going to call dark spirits to my village? Certainly not, the scholar declared, glad that the chief was there. He was sure the chief would understand this intellectual matter. Then what are you doing? The chief asked with curiosity. Well said the man in a pompous voice. I was on my way home from the ocean when I came across a pile of bones. On top of the heap was this skull. It spoke to me. I brought it here to share this wonder with the village. The chief did not look convinced. I'll show you, said the man, raising the skull so that it looked at the chief. Say something to the chief, he commanded. The skull said nothing. The chief frowned. Speak, the man said. I command you. The skull remained silent. <laughs> One of the children laughed. Speak, he said. You must speak. The man started getting nervous. The skull said nothing. The man begged and pleaded with the skull. The skull remained silent. The people began to get angry again, and the chief got angry right along with them. You are always a troublemaker in my village, and now you come here with this nonsense? The chief and the people had had enough. They took the skull from the man, found the mound of bones he had taken it from, and put it back there. That very day, the villagers held a meeting with the chief and decided to throw the man out of their village. They watched him collect his few belongings and said to him, Since you found that skull so much company, why don't you go live with it? The man stormed out of the village and down the road to the pile of bones. He picked up the skull. Before he could get one word out of his mouth, the skull said, Sorry about that. What? Now you talk? That is not going to do me much good. Why didn't you say something back in the village? I told you, the skull replied. It is easy to talk. It is not always easy to find something worthwhile to say. You are absolutely unpleasant, the man screamed. <clears throat> I don't know what trouble you caused that brought you to this sorry state, but you deserved everything you got. I already told you what got me into trouble, the skull replied. Talking, same as you. The end. So, what did you think about that story? Now, you know I have some questions, as I always do. Now, I 
the beginning of the story. Do you, were you listening? Do you remember what the skull said when he was asked by the man, what brought you to this sorry state, brother? Do you remember what the skull said? And what do you think about the man's character, not noticing all of the beauty that was around him, but thought that intellectual things were more important than just enjoying the beauty and the things that are around you. What do you think about uh, this uh, type of person, his character? Do you think the chief and the villagers made the right decision by kicking him out of the village? And do you, now in the end, uh, were you surprised when the skull started talking again? Hmm. And what do you think about how, do you think the man should have brought the skull to the village and showed it off the way he did? Do you think that was the right decision? And my last question is this. What do you think the moral of the story was? I think I know, but I'm going to leave that one up to you. And I'll see you next time on Authorized.